Hey everyone, welcome back to the Yasin School's Test Driver Challenge tutorial series. In this video, we will be creating a nose cone, a front wing, and making some axle and wheel adjustments. But before we actually move on to modeling our car, let's first visit the technical regulations to look at some points we need to be aware of. In the first video, we had gone through the construction of a test driver challenge car. We saw that we have a main car body made out of the F1 model block. We had wheels, axles, axle bushes, and a front wing and nose cone. If you observe over here, the front wing and nose cone is a completely separate structure than the other parts of the car. In order to join these two structures, we're going to create something called a lap joint, which is an engineering term used to create a joint between two separate parts. These two joints are then reinforced with some sort of adhesive in between them. For our purpose, we're going to create a specific type of a lap joint called a cross lap joint between the horizontal front wing and the vertical car. Now let's head to Fusion 360 in order to get modeling our front wing and nose cone structure. We need to now create the first part of the lap joint structure and to do that we will have to extend the main car body itself. So let's go ahead and create, go to the left profile, zoom in a little bit over here, select this face, right click and click on create sketch. So to create that extension, I'm just going to simply go ahead and create a two-point rectangle. I'm just going to put it a dimension of 10.5 by 10.5. I think that that looks good. And in order to increase the surface area between the contacts of the front wing and the main body, I'm going to create a little fillet over here. In order to do that, I will cre click on create a circle and we will use a feature called two tangent circle. A two tangent circle creates a circle between two perpendicular lines. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and re get rid of the rest of the circle that we don't need. We can also get rid of this line. Brilliant. Now while we are at creating the extension, let's go ahead and also create the base of the front wing in the same sketch. So to do that, I will create a line all the way down and then join that line to the main body. Now there are two parts of this sketch that we have created. We have the extension from the main body itself and the base of the front nose cone that we'll create. So I'm just going to use this profile for now to extrude and join to the main body. So click on solid, extrude, and make sure that we are extruding all the way to the other edge. And to do that, simply click on the other face. This will extend the extrude and it will join the extension from one side to the other. Click OK. Now you have created the extension or the first part of a lap joint. For the next bit, we will create part two of a lap joint. And to do that, let's unhide the sketch that we had created earlier. And now we need to create the bottom part of our nose cone, which will be attached to this lap joint. So just click on this profile. Click on extrude and follow the same step of going to the other side and click on this face so that it's extruded all the way. However, the only difference this time we're going to make is change the operation from join to new body. And as soon as you click new body, Fusion 360 differentiates between the two bodies by changing its color. So as you can see, the main body is denoted in green, whereas the new body will be denoted in a gray color. 
click OK. Let's un let's hide the sketch that we had created. And to make sure that this is in fact a new body, let's go ahead and check on our bodies folder. And in there, as you can see, this is a completely separate body from the main uh, F1 model block. So if you hide that, you can see that there is the extension that we had created earlier, and then you have the main body. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and create our front nose cone. To do that, I click on the top surface, right click, and click on create sketch. Now I'm first going to create an outline between within which my front nose cone will lie. So I'm going to select that as 24 and change the length to 40. These are just rough estimates. You can play around and experiment with what works best for you. Let's go ahead and create the conical shape that we need to achieve. So clicking from that point to the middle of the line, similarly from this point to the middle of the line it itself. Hit escape. And now you have a basic conical shape of the front wing, sorry, of the front nose cone that you need to create. We're going to use a feature that we used earlier to create a smoother front nose. So let's create a circle, a two tangent circle, and we're going to create a circle between these two tangents. And I'm going to go with the value of, let's say 2.5. That looks good. So this is going to be our front nose cone shape. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and create our front wing outline as well. I'm just going to hide this dimension down here. For this, I'm going to create a quick rectangle as well. And let's make sure that for creating the front wing, we are following the technical rules and regulations. For the front wing, we need to make sure that the whole of the front wing is in front of our front wheel. Next, we need to make sure that the span segments of the front wing is a minimum of 20 mm. And we also make sure that the front cord is a minimum of 15 mm. Keeping this information in mind, let's head to Fusion and plug those values in. So for our cord, since it says minimum is 15, I'm going to go ahead with a safer 19 mm. And for the wingspan, I'm going to go ahead with a value more than 20, which is 25. Now we need to make sure that the front wing is attached to the front nose cone. So for that, I'm going to click on this line. select its midpoint and point that to this. This way, the midpoint of our front wing is exactly between the main body and the front nose cone. Now we need to create a reference point to model our front wing shape. So click on create point and click on the point on this line and let's add a dimension to it. So from this point, all the way till here. This needs to be 20 mm. The reason for that is if we visit the technical regulations again, the span is counted from the main body to the most outermost surface of the front wing. Hence, translating that to the design, we're going to take this point and add a 20 mm dimension perpendicular to the body of the car. And now we can go ahead and create a shape that is a little more aer aerodynamic. So I'm going to click on that point and end up all the way over here. Let's also go ahead and join the front wing to the nose cone. Now 
Now that we have created outlines of our structure, let's get rid of all the extra lines that we don't need anymore. Click on trim. This line. Perfect. Let's go and add our dimensions back in. Now we need to replicate our wing from one side to the other. For that, we're going to use the same method as we did with the rear wing, that is mirroring. So let's zoom out a little bit over here. Create a line that extends all the way. And as we know, this line is not going to be used in any active sketch. So let's go ahead and select the line and change it to construction. Now select all of the parts that we need to mirror. Head to create. Click on mirror. And now just select the mirror line as created earlier. And the platform will create a quick preview of what that mirror looks like. Click on OK. And finish sketch. Brilliant. Now we have created the sketch of what our front nose cone and wings need to look like. Let's now convert them into a 3D model. To do that, let's click on our front nose cone first. Click on extrude. We need to make sure that we extrude it all the way down, selecting this profile. And our operation is going to be new body, because if you remember, our front nose cone and our main body need to be two separate parts. So go ahead and click OK. And the next bit we are going to create is using the same sketch, enable it back again. And this time we're going to ex extrude our front wings. So we will perform the same operation, which is selecting to the bottom of the car body and making sure our operation is set to new body. There we go. So now we have created a basic layout of what our front wing and nose cone structure should look like. Let's go ahead and make this look a little more aerodynamic. I'm going to use a visual style called hidden edges to make sure that I am not coinciding with the tether line cutout. Let's create a sketch and we'll use the middle plane to do that. So I'm going to use this plane over here and zoom in a little bit. So let's first go ahead and create a line from making sure that we don't override our cutout for the tether line guide. And we're going to pull this line all the way up till maybe over here and let's make a boundary line which will then allow us to close this sketch and make it a um, profile so now that i've extruded my profile oh let's click on home click on finish sketch and i'll change my visual style back again to uh, visible edges only and this will help me make a cutout of my front nose cone and wing so just select the profile there click on extrude now instead of doing it on either sides what i'm going to do is i'm going to select a direction called symmetric which will follow the same metrics on both the sides, which will help me cut out my slanting aerodynamic feature so go ahead and click ok i think that looks pretty good now let's go ahead and create our front wing thickness. To do that, 
we will be using a feature called shell. So click on shell, click on this surface over here and put in a value of 1.5. The reason I'm putting 1.5 is if you visit the technical rules and regulations again and scroll down, it tells us the front wing thickness should be a minimum of 1.5 and a maximum of 6 mm. And since it's a wing, we're going to make sure that it is at its minimum to give us the least amount of drag, which will make our car faster. Now, by clicking and using the shell function, if we rotate around here, you can see that there's a cavity being created in our front wing nose cone. And we need to make sure that this cavity is through and through. So for that, we will go ahead and click on this feature and simply extrude and pull it on the other side. Let's go to the top view, making sure that we are not cutting anything else. So extrude this all the way out just till it protrudes out of the main body and click on OK. And if we zoom in now, we see that our front wing is now created. Now, of course, we need to replicate this feature of shell and getting rid of the back panel on the other side as well. You could choose to mirror this, but I'm going to make use of the timeline functionality to head back in time and make sure that I choose both the surfaces to make that change. So if I go back to my timeline, I can see that the first change I had made was creating a shell. So I'm just going to double click my shell. And this time, I'm not only going to select this surface, but also hold down control and select this surface. What Fusion 360 then does is automatically update the model and make sure that it applies the shell function of 1.5 mm to both sides. Click on OK. The next change that we need to make is making sure that the cutout feature that we did on this side is also used on this side. So to do that, we'll go back to our timeline and use our latest feature extrude and make sure holding down control, we can now select this profile as well, which will replicate the cutout on the other side. Leave control now and click on OK. There we go. The front wing is now complete. And if you observe at the bottom of the car by moving to the bottom surface, you can see that the tether line cutout is not being extended all the way to the front of the car. To make sure we do that, let's go back to the home view, head to the back view, Let's hide our screw eyes for this operation since we don't need them right now. Select the back face of the car, right click, click on extrude sketch, click on create sketch, and we're going to create a rectangle around the cutout of the leather line guide. Click on finish, and we're now going to select this sketch and make sure that we extrude it all the way to the front of the car. Click OK. Now this will cut out a perfect shape and if you go to the front view of the car, it now allows you to pass the tether line guide through the middle of the car from the back all the way to the front. At this point, save your work and make sure that you mark your version description as created front wing and nose cone. Click OK. The next bit that we're going to go through is making sure that we adjust the wheels and axles of the car to make it even more aerodynamic. When I was in the front view, 
I observed that the wheels protrude out of the car more than we need them to. So here is where the front wing ends and that's how far the front wheel goes. And as you can see, we have quite a few millimeters to reduce from the bush all the way to the body. So let's go ahead and measure that. You can see there's a distance of about Let's restart the selection since it selected the wrong. There we go. So as you can see from the bush all the way to the starting of the axle, you can see that the distance is 7.5 mm. So that's the amount of distance we can actually reduce in order to push this wheel more towards the car. So I'm gonna click on escape. And now, in order to make that change, we need to change the axle itself. So to do that, we'll click on axle. Head to the component. Double click on the base feature in the timeline. So that we go back to where the timeline uh, in which the axle was created. And now from both sides, we're going to reduce about seven millimeters from the left and the right. So I'm going to select these two faces and simply going to use the press pull function in order to push the wheel, push the axle back by seven mm from this side. Click OK. And we'll go come on to the other side, click on these two surfaces, make sure I press pull and push it back 7mm from this side as well. And click OK. And now click on finish base feature. If you go to the main view of the car, you can see that since we have reduced the axle, the wheels have gone inside by themselves. And now they fall between the front wing, making it a lot more aerodynamic. Let's do that for the rear wheels as well. So I'm going to find my axle. Click on it. Click on the base feature. First, let's figure out the distance between how much we need to reduce. So inspect from this to this and that 7.5 as well. Now that we have made sure of that, we can go back to the axle, double click on the base feature and shave off 7mm from both sides. So click on these two surfaces, zoom out a little bit, click on extrude and push it back by 7 mm. Using the press pull function, we have now pushed back 7 mm from one side and let's do the same from the other side. So click on this surface, click on the other surface and use the press pull function to push it back 7 mm and click OK. Now let's head back to the main view. And now if you click finish base feature, the wheels will now be pushed in. Let's make sure that this wheel is also pushed in correctly by hitting the wheel. moving it by 7 mm. Click OK. And go back to the home view. And there you have it. You have finally constructed the test driver challenge car. 
We still have a few more steps to do. But at this point, you can go ahead and look at all the features that you have made so far. Look at any changes you want to make, any uh, changes to the dimensions you want to make. And make sure always to go back to the technical rules and regulations and see if your car, car follows those technical rules and regulations. The only thing now left to do is to combine all of our front wing and nose cone parts into one single body. So to do that, we'll use a feature called Combine. Click on the main nose cone. And now we will attach the other parts to the main nose cone. So to do that, we'll select the tool body function, select all of our extra bodies. We will move underneath the car and also select our base and click on new component and click OK. Now that we have created a new component, let's go ahead and rename this 